Welcome back to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker, the weekly radio show that informs and educates you on how to buy or sell real estate with the host of the program that is Barb Schlinker, the owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. Now, Barb, I know many people ask you questions when getting ready to sell their homes. So what are the top questions that home sellers should be asking before they put their home up for sale? Well, Richard, unless a home is really underpriced by at least 10%, in general, homes are taking a little bit longer to sell now than they were probably a year, year and a half ago. And, you know, part of that is that there are 30% fewer buyers in the buyer pool right now just because of affordability. They can't handle the payments with the rates being as high as they are. So that's why it's more it's still more of a seller's market but only if they get those four things right pricing it right picking the right agent preparing the home for sale and making sure your agent is properly marketing the home to attract the right buyer um so let's kind of go over some questions that a seller should be asking uh when they're getting ready to sell their home the number one question is, how do I prepare my home for sale? And I get those questions all the time from customers. I love answering it. And, you know, it it depends on the house. It's a very custom answer. I was in a house yesterday that looked amazing. It was ready except for a little bit of decluttering. It was really ready to go. And I think the problem is many home sellers often are their worst critics of their own home. Well, should I update this? Should I paint that? And I'm like, no, it doesn't need to be done. Um, so you really need kind of an objective pair of eyes to take a look at it and just give you tips on what to do and what not to do to get your house ready for sale. And that's a free service that we offer to our clients all the time. The number two question, which is probably the most important question, is how much is my house worth? Now, there's a lot of conflicting data out there about this one topic. Number one is they look at the online estimates of what their home is worth, and those could be accurate or they're not. And you never know how accurate. Many times, some of these websites like Zillow and Realtor.com they both have online guesstimations of what the home is worth, but there's a big wide range in them. And at the end of the day, they don't know anything about that house in particular. They don't know what kind of improvements are in the home. They don't know whether or not the home has views, for an example. Uh, homes with views tend to sell for more money than a home that doesn't have views. And, you know, not unlike the boom that was going on, not every single home is selling. And that's why pricing it correctly is absolutely critical. And you need to have an agent that really knows how to help you make that decision to price it the right way so it doesn't sit on the market month after month after month. Nobody wants that. Nobody likes it, especially when we have problems with some of these agents, you know, either scheduling the showing and not showing up or showing up early, showing up late, leaving doors unlocked, leaving lights on, using the restrooms. All these things happen all the time. So it's always better to get through that pain point as quickly as possible. Um, and you can do that if you price it right. Now, that's one of the things that we absolutely do. We provide excellent empirical data not only on what homes have sold for, which is important data for the appraisers, it's what your current competition is. What does the new construction in the area look like? Because that's a tough competitor. Uh, what do similar homes that have sold in the area? What if the buyer doesn't care about the floor plan? What other homes are out there that the buyer can buy in that price range? So you really have to position the home to win in that scenario. And that's why we try our best to give our clients the best information. And that way, when you go on the market, you're perfectly set up that the home is prepared right. The buyer doesn't have to worry about any kind of deferred maintenance unless you're selling it below market that it's priced realistically versus optimistically, and it's promoted properly. The pictures have to be right too, because we know a huge percentage of the buyers are eliminating homes right on their phone, swipe, 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 in a matter of less than one minute. Sometimes it could just be one picture and they're saying no. And that's why it's really important to pick the right agent. 
The number three question that's a great question to ask is how long will it take for me to sell my home? How do I know if I actually hit the right target on all those things? Well, it depends on preparation. It depends on the seller's needs. Some sellers want to sell more quickly than not. Some sellers want a normal market time and are not in a huge hurry. Um, and so if it's priced right, it will sell right away. We just put one home under contract that the buyer said, okay, I'll, I'll buy it. it the first weekend out of the gate, we had a huge crowd at the open house. We got a contract right away. And the seller's like, wait, slow down. I don't want to go that fast. I still need to say goodbye to friends and family. So, um, you know, we can always negotiate those things when it comes up, but we definitely ask the right question. So as far as days on market, it really depends on where you are in the area. Like I pulled up a graph and I superimposed all the different local areas like Douglas County, Pueblo, El Paso County, Woodland Park. And what we're seeing right now, almost consistently across the board, is the average days on market are dropping, which is kind of typical in the springtime. And in most cases, with the exception of Woodland Park, the average days on market are less than 90 days. So that's a basically a pure definition of a buyer's market. So that's a good thing. That means that you got to price it right and make sure that if it's priced what I call realistically versus optimistically and it's marketed right, you're going to get it sold in a reasonable amount of time. But if you don't, the market's going to tell you right away. The market gives you clues right out of the gate as to whether or not you got the four P's correct. So the four P's are preparation, promotion, pricing, and um, picking the right agent. So number one, the number of showings is a big clue. If you're not getting very many showings, if you're getting onesie, one a week, one a month, something like that, something's wrong. It could be marketing. It could be pricing. It could be a combination of both. It could be the condition of the home. So all those things have to be really scrutinized. If you go 10 showings with no offer, your price too high. If you go 10 days with no showings, your price too high. But if you're getting offers, you're probably very close to being priced right. Maybe that's not the right buyer for you. Buyer number one, you might pick buyer number two. That's okay, no problem. But if you're getting low offers, it's probably you're just a little close, but it's not it's not the buyers that you want. So you can just wait out the market. I just sold a home down in the Fountain area a couple of weeks ago where the initial offer that came in, the buyer's agent who was a licensed or the buyer was a licensed real estate agent actually asked the seller to pay her 31,000 of her closing costs. That's a, it was, it was priced at four and a quarter. It's like, what? Why would a seller pay that much money of the buyer's closing cost in addition to the seller's closing cost? And so I called the lender and said, so why do they need so much closing cost? And he's like, well, they're going to pay all this money to buy down the interest rate. Then they're going to pay some more money to permanently buy down the rate. And then they're going to pay all of the buyer's closing cost. And it's going to be great. Well, it might be great for the buyer, but it's not great for the seller. So the seller went, reject. I'm not even playing that game. I'm not even going to answer that offer. And we went on to sell it to a good buyer that didn't ask for ridiculous concessions. Um, and it's really important that when you do get offers, that you pay a close attention to what it says. Watch for those strings attached, like 31000 in closing cost, or weird contingencies in the contract. I recently got an offer on a very high priced home where they wanted to tie up and reserve this home and wait for them to get out of a new construction contract with a builder. And it's like, no, no, you don't get to lock and shop, honey. If, if you're under contract with another home, you need to terminate that. And then you're available to buy this home. And so we didn't respond to it. We didn't, the seller didn't accept that offer. And then a week or so went by and I reached out to the agent and said, hey, what's going on? Are you still going to stick with the new construction contract? Oh, yeah, we are. And I was like, why would you do that? That creates all kinds of demand destruction on that particular seller if you 
take a contract, take the house off the market, all the other buyers disappear. And of course, the offer was submitted before we started showing. And it wasn't, the buyer didn't have the ability to perform. So you got to really make sure you hire an agent that knows how to read the contracts, every single paragraph, and understand what it means. Some sale contingencies, and as an example, can get very complicated. I had one that I was a four-way sale. So you really have to read everything, get a copy of everything. So you're fully aware of what's going on when you accept a contract. Another question that I get a lot is how important is staging? And I just sold a home last week where it was on the market, showing after showing after showing, it wasn't selling. We were talking about making a price adjustment, but I, I didn't think it was underpriced. It was just that they had replaced the basement carpet, but not the main level. And then they went and moved out of the house. So once they did that, the traffic patterns on the old carpet really jumped out. It just looked terribly dated, empty. And so that was the feedback. So they came back, they did some improvements, they replaced the carpet, updated a few things, and we staged it, boom, sold for almost full price right away. You don't want your house to be eliminated on the smartphone. So that means that when you do something like that, you gotta update the photos. My name is Barb Schlinker. I'm the broker owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty and the host of this show, Your Real Estate Voice. And we're talking about the top questions a home seller should be asking when getting ready to sell. And when we come back, we're going to cover some more. Richard? If you're planning on making a move this year and you want one of Barb's free reports, it'll help you prepare to sell your home for the most money. Go to Barb Has the Buyers. You'll find the 10 questions you must ask before hiring an agent. That'll be up in the upper top under the button that says free reports and give Barb a call at 719-301-3900. We're discussing the top questions a home seller should ask when getting ready to sell their home. Everyone knows I've been recommending you for years now, Barb. Tell us what are some of the key questions that a home seller should ask from their real estate agent. Well, a good question is why should I pick one agent over another? Just so home sellers know, Actually, 80% of real estate agents get out of the business every five years. And with this new settlement with the National Association of Realtors, it's going to be a lot more than that. 81% of agents sell three or less homes a year, not a month, a year. And half of those don't sell any. So a really good question is how many homes have you sold in the last year, in the last month, uh, in your entire career, if they know that data? Most of them don't even know the data. Um, because, you know, if there are fewer sales that that agent is doing, how do they really know how to navigate what's going on in the market and whether or not the um, suggestions that they make to the seller are consistent with the current market so they can have the seller win and get the most money? Also, we all often get a question about the home's uh, assessed value on the property tax website and how does that differ from like Zillow and uh, an appraiser value and market value. So an assessed value is basically, it's based, it's the property tax valuation that's supposed to be based on the value of the home 18 months behind the current market. Well, 18 months ago, the market was a lot hotter in uh, 2022, right? So that's for tax purposes only. But generally, most of the time, it's less than what the current market value is, but it, it isn't right now because we had that big boom when the rates were low. But market value essentially is what a buyer will pay. A Zillow value is just an online guess of what it might sell using similar homes around it. An appraised value is an op opinion of value from a licensed appraiser. Sometimes it's good, sometimes not so good. So another question that people should ask is how long is the agreement that you're going to sign, that you're going to ask me to sign to commit to sell my house with that one agent? Now, that's a negotiable point between the seller and the agent. And so the length of agreement kind of depends on how quickly a home like that can sell, like homes in the multi-millions are going to take longer to sell than a home that might be priced at 400000 Right. And also, um, what what does the agent actually promised, and can you get out of the contract? Can you cancel the contract if you're not satisfied, or if they're not doing what they 
actually promise to perform. And so that's part of the stuff that we go over. We offer all kinds of guarantees, including the cancellation guarantee with our clients, communication guarantee, uh, honest promises guarantee. They can fire us if they're not happy. We have many more questions that you can download on that free report on our website, the top questions you should ask an agent before you put your home on the market. So if you are thinking of making a move, give us a call, 719-301-3900 or go to barbhasthebuyers.com. Richard? You're listening to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. And if you're thinking of making a move, call Barb at 719-301-3900 or visit barbhasthebuyers.com. Or if you want a free report, the top 10 questions to ask before you hire a real estate agent, visit barbhasthebuyers.com. Go to the green button that'll be in the upper right-hand corner and it says free reports. When we come back, we'll be talking about how sellers can save thousands by hiring Barb and her team. Plus, we'll be talking about that National Association of Realtors lawsuit. You don't want to miss that or Barb's hot new listings.